Hey what's up guys, my name is Alon RS and today I will be going over the boss Telos and give you the basic understandings of his mechanics to help you guys get your first kills, so let's get into this shall we? To start off there will be a meter on the top of the screen, this one shows how much power Telos has, the number one route is never get it completely filled. If you do however notice that you're going to fill it, you need to make sure you have a lot of health as it will deal a massive amount of damage to you and reset the meter. I will explain how the meter is filled in just a second, I just need to explain some other mechanics first. So let's get into the fight, the boss will start off by waking up as soon as you get close to him, after that he will hit you with either melee or magic attacks. It doesn't seem like you can really decide what he will use, but it's fairly obvious what you're being hit with because of the attack animations are vastly different. One is a simple melee swing and the magic one shoots a small red ball towards you rapidly as seen on the screen. So the boss will have three basic mechanics it will maintain throughout the entire fight except one of them which will only maintain for the two first. The first one is a charge ability which he will use after screaming Gilinor give me strength. When he hits you with a charge he will deal about 2000 damage and dude this is extremely hard to avoid and usually isn't even worth avoiding as it doesn't happen that often and it doesn't deal a massive amount of damage. If you do however want to avoid it, you will have to use the Surge or Disengage ability right before he completes his charge. The second ability is a Stun into Slam Dunk ability. He will shout out Hold Still Invader. Shortly after that he will stun you and proceed to jump up in the air and land on you dealing a large amount of damage. The way to avoid this is to use the freedom ability as he shouts Hold Still Invader and proceed to run away from where you stood which will avoid his dunk. The last ability only exists for the two first phases and this is a root ability. He will start rooting you as soon as he shouts your anima will return to the source. He will start dealing rapid damage to you but the damage is very minor. However during this he will also heal himself so getting this mechanic done with quickly is important. The way you counter this ability is to deal 3000 damage to Telos while he's rooting you and that will break it. Alright, so that's the abilities that will never really change and stays relevant for the entire fight with the exception of the root ability which will only stay for the first two phases. Now let's get into the B mechanic which is the really interesting part about this fight. This mechanic will exist in the three first phases meaning the only phase without them is the last one. There will be different types of beams for each phase but the beams are always the same for the same phases. To quickly go back and talk about the meter you didn't want to reach 100% that I was talking about in the start of the video. If these beams go into Telos they will charge the meter and when you are standing in the beam the meter will go down. So if you're noticing that the boss is standing in the beam you should do one of two things. Either move the boss from the beam or put yourself in the beam and soak it instead. Now let's get into what these beams do. So first off they spawn and despawn randomly around the room and shoots a beam across the entire room. The beam in the first phase is green and will rapidly grant you adrenaline but at the cost of draining your prayer points. Standing in this is really 100% up to you if you want to make the sacrifice or if you don't feel like it's worth it. The beam in the second phase is black and will reduce the damage you deal but it will also reduce the damage you take. From experience I felt like standing in this beam all the time was the best way of handling the mechanic as it kind of cancels out itself and it makes it easier to deal with the meter at the top of the screen because I made sure I soaked everything myself. And for the last beam which is a red beam we have a beam that increases your damage done as well as increasing the damage you take. This is also very much up to preference if you feel like taking the extra damage is something you can deal with or not. If you feel like making the phase faster then standing in the beam is a great choice, however remember that you will have to be very careful and not make any mistakes because it will absolutely cost you a lot of health. Let's go through every single phase now with the different mechanics. In phase 1 you will have to deal with a green beam as well as the three basic abilities meaning the charge, the root and the stun into slam dunk. When the boss hits 300,000 health the phase 2 will begin. In phase 2 you will have to deal with a black beam as well as the three basic abilities again. Phase 1 and 2 is pretty much the same except for the beam. At 200,000 health phase 3 will begin. So this is where things become a bit different. In this phase you will have to deal with a red beam and two basic abilities. These are the charge ability and the stun into slam dunk abilities. However as the root ability is removed you will now have to deal with adds instead. The ad spawns quite fast randomly around the room but they only have 1000 health. From what I've seen it seems as if you do not kill this quickly enough the boss will start pulsing 2000 damage hits on you times the amount of adds that are currently alive. 
So for example, if there's two adds alive for a long periods of time, he will start dealing 2000 damage times 2 on you every single pulse. The counter to this ability is very simple, it's just to kill all the adds as soon as you possibly can, and when the boss hits 100,000 health, phase 4 will begin. This is the most unique part of the fight, and I love it. There is three orbs around the room that is made to soak a one-shot ability he does in the face. He will perform this ability on 75,000 health, 50,000 health, and on 25,000 health. Performing this one-shot ability takes time for him to charge up, however, so you do have time to get ready, so let me explain how this works. Start the phase off by standing by the orb closest to where you started, which should be right behind you to the west on the minimap. DPS him down to 75,000 health, where he will become immune to damage. At this time he will spawn 3 adds, meanwhile starting to channel his one shot. The adds are not that dangerous, so just kill them off while waiting for the boss to use his ability. You know that the ability has been officially used when the orb you're standing on turns into a pool, and the game also tells you that you survived his one shot. After this, you want to head over to the northern orb and repeat the process. DPS him down to 50,000 health and kill the adds and survive the one shot. When that is done, head over to the orb that is left which should be on the south part of the map and do the same thing again. Now keep in mind that meanwhile you're doing all of this, you still have to avoid his charge ability as well as the stun into slam dunk ability. Also the power meter for Telos doesn't seem to be controllable at this stage, so when it's about to hit 100%, make sure that you're as close to full health as possible to survive the hit, which should be around 5500 damage with no enrage. So when you succeeded with soaking the last orb with this one shot ability, you should finish off the last 25,000 health and after that he dies and you are officially done with the encounter. Just as some final words, I want to say that this was a basic guide, which is why I decided not to go into detail on literally everything and give you math homework, because I wanted to give you a general idea of the fight so you can get your first kills. Also, as this is the first day of release, there might be some things I missed out, and in that case, please comment below, and that is going to serve as extra information for the viewers. Anyways, I thank you all for watching, and good luck with your Telos killing. Have a good day, guys.